Hello, independent mothers. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Erica. And listen, I was driving along in my car, and then all of a sudden, I heard this song by Beyonce, her new single, Break My Soul. And I immediately just started jamming to the point where I wanted to pull over on the side of the road, get out the car, and let the song happen. Okay? It was that serious. Now, usually, whenever songs affect me like this, it's really the beat that gets me. And this song in particular has a dope sound. But then I started listening to the lyrics of it, and I immediately got my entire life i was like oh my god this is resonating with me now the verse that really spoke to me was when she said i'm looking for motivation i'm looking for a new foundation yeah and i'm on that new vibration i'm building my own foundation yeah hold up oh baby baby so in today's video, it's not about analyzing Beyonce's lyrical skills. It's more about recognizing the strengths in your life that are holding you back from being the best version of yourself and also implementing a plan of action so that you can break free. Now, if you are experiencing a feeling of being stuck, like you are in quicksand, being unable to pull yourself away from the anchor that's holding you back, then don't worry, I have been there. I'm going to share some tips that have helped me over the years and currently do help me because, you know, life happens, you're not perfect. So things can happen wherein you get yourself back into uncomfortable situations. I'm going to give you those tips and more, and we're going to explore what it is that's going on and what could be going on in your life. Now, these tips that I'll be sharing with you are going to be in the form of categories that are common within independent parenting. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It's going to be some great content, and I'll see you inside the video right after this intro. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, if you are new to me, thank you so much for tuning in today. This channel is geared to providing support for busy solo moms. Now, the first category that we are going to look into is career change. Now, as an independent mother, the career that we have sets the tone of the activities that are implemented throughout the day or throughout the week, throughout the year, throughout the rest of our lives, right? We are using our career as a means of finances, right? Our ability to pay for things. But we also need to recognize that our career is for us to live within our purpose. And I think oftentimes, with me personally, over the years, I have chosen a career based upon its financial stability that it can give me and my child instead of really living my purpose only to later find out that I am just sick of my job. Right. I am sick of the employment. I am sick of everything that is surrounded around the job that I am performing because it's not serving me. It's not serving my purpose. It's really just something that I want to do to make money. So sometimes the thoughts that inhibit us as independent mothers from making a decision about a career change uh, is that we are overthinking. We are in a fearful mindset. Are we just, you know, constantly are trying to compare and contrast the effects of our career change that, uh, is going to have on ourselves and our children, which is totally understandable. You know, you want to think about that whenever you are analyzing everything. But I have a tendency myself to overanalyze things, overthink, to the point where you kind of get in your own way. You become the controller of this vehicle instead of allowing yourself to be a passenger, so to speak, right? You want to make sure that you are taking charge of your life. You are implementing a plan because you have a sense of urgency. Um, you may have to come to a decision very quickly depending upon the circumstances of your life. You know, it could be a number of things. But what I mainly want you to focus in on is the wanting or the desire to take control to the point where you're losing sight of what it is that you should do. So if you're feeling like you're in a situation where you're wanting to change your career, but you're not really sure on what it is that you want to do, you know, I definitely want to assure you that it is okay to be in a situation. I think sometimes we kind of beat up on ourselves and we find that, okay, why am I at 30 something years old or 40 something years old trying to make a decision on the career that I'd like to choose? Well, because we're constantly evolving, we're constantly changing, we constantly are trying to find new interests. Or maybe we're not trying to find it, we just happen to fall upon a new interest and we want to explore that. There's nothing wrong with that, that is so common. And what I would encourage you to do is to go ahead and explore that. I want you to be very careful not to allow fear to deter your mind, especially whenever there are clear signs that lead you to changing your career. So what can you do whenever you're just inside of your head and you're trying to make a decision on your career change? Well, I know the biggest thing that happened to me that caused a huge transformation in my life was whenever I released the wanting to control everything, right? So try this if you're feeling a little anxious about 
a career change. Think about your career change as an exciting concert that you're going to. You have already listened to the artists, you know uh, what their vocals sound like, you know what their performances are, or at least you can kind of sense what type of performance you're going to receive from probably watching you know, TV shows or award shows to give you a glimpse inside of what you're going to see whenever you go see them live. So you're really excited, right? So you're not thinking about all of the problems that can occur during the concert. You're thinking about how much fun you're going to have at the concert, how much fun you're going to have with your girlfriends going, and maybe you're thinking about what you're going to do afterwards as far as where you're going to go to eat and talk about the concert. Now with your job, with the career change that you are thinking about pursuing, you already know that whatever career that you decide, you're basing it upon your ability to do the job, right? You're qualified. You already know your own experience. You are a overly qualified person. You are the person to do the job. So you just need to get excited about what it is to come, right? So that those feel good energies can suppress the dis-ease that you're feeling and then allow for you to be in a more relaxed state of mind. Therefore, your thoughts will come to you naturally. So bottom line guys is this, just take time to breathe, relax, don't worry, let go of the need to control. Your thoughts will come to you naturally whenever you are in a relaxed state of mind, whenever you are at ease. Therefore, you will not be left to believe that you are the one who is the anchor that is holding yourself back from the career change that you would like to have. All right, so moving right along to our next category, and it is finances. Now, being an independent mother in terms of managing large amounts of money can mean that most of us use one stream of income to support our family. Now, this can work with many families, but there are some where it does not work at all. Now this can work for many families if your income is providing sufficient funds and your expenses are not exceeding your earnings. But what about the other people? What about anyone who has that one source of income and you have a hard time keeping up with you know, your expenses um, and you're just really trying to keep your head above water? Now, this has happened to me on a number of occasions wherein I was overspending or either I was just not making enough money to live the quality of life that I knew that I wanted to have, right? So I had to figure out what other sources of income that I can incorporate in my life that can give me more money to do things that I love to do, things that I enjoy, and also take care of the household. But um, one thing that I was finding out was that I had a lack of understanding the foundations of what affordability is. So what I do want to encourage you to do is to definitely get an understanding of what affordability is and it may sound elementary but you know you don't know if you don't know right and it's okay some things that sound elementary to us may sound a little foolish or may sound like we don't need to go through it because we're adults now but it could be that we need to cycle back to our youth and figure out where and what point in time were we not equipped with financial literacy so my tip for you would be to Educate yourself in financial literacy as well as educate your children. You know, whenever I was growing up, I didn't have that. I didn't really have anybody coming to me telling me the ins and the outs, you know, um, anything about economics that was just not told to me in a way that I needed to have it told, right? In a way that was going to serve me so I could have the proper foundation. Now, if you don't have a way of understanding it for yourself, definitely seek out additional resources. There is one site that I want to give you guys that will be very helpful for you. The name of the resource is financialeducatorscouncil.org. And this is where kids, adults, you know, parents, educators can go online to seek out educational programs um, for just a better understanding of financial literacy itself. So be sure to check out the website for more information. All right, independent mothers, we are at my final category here, and that is romantic relationships. Now, I think that we can all agree that, you know, independent mothers can use some advice, some tips, some help within this category. I know I certainly can. I found myself in so many different relationships over the years wherein I felt that I was being pulled away from my purpose. I was giving too much into the relationship and not receiving enough. 
There wasn't an equal balance. Now, I in particular am a giver. I'm a caregiver by nature. I just love helping other people. And I think that that can pose as a problem when it comes to romantic relationships because I just have to understand that I can't give too much of myself and leave myself empty. And then the other person is filled up, right? I've also found myself in situations wherein I was so much of a caregiver <laughs> to my partner, wherein he came into the relationship with all types of issues. And I was a optimistic person, happy, go lucky, uh, filled with so much positivity, great energy. And you know, I was pouring into him to make sure that he was okay. Only to find out that months later, I was embodying those issues that he possessed. I helped him out so much to the point where I lost sight of what I needed. I didn't fill my cup up. I gave to him what was in my cup. Therefore, he was feeling great. And I was left wondering, what happened to my energy? When did it shift? What's going on? So I found myself habitually doing that over a period of time and really being in a relationship, feeling like, okay, I don't know if I should still be in this relationship. I mean, there are some things that are great, but then there are other times whenever I'm feeling like, okay, I'm losing myself. Now, if you guys are familiar with the minister, Tori Roberts, then you're going to know what I'm talking about here. You might have already seen the post on his Instagram page whenever he mentioned how to know when a relationship is over. Now, whenever I saw the posting on his page, I almost just flipped back <laughs> and did a cartwheel or whatever. I was like, oh my God, this resonates with me so good. I'm gonna paraphrase this in my interpretation of what he said. He was pretty much saying that the way to know that a relationship is over or the way to know when a relationship is over is whenever you have a partner who has gotten you through a tough time, but then you realize that they were the tough time. Okay, so I think it's time to have church. Cut the video. All right, so how many of you ladies have experienced that? Like, I definitely have experienced that. That's why it resonated with me so well. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, he's talking to me. Because, like, I think sometimes in relationships, like, we as women, we can start looking at the red flags as, like, variations of red. Like, it's, it's not, it's pale pink, you know, it's, it's light red. <laughs> It ain't dark red, right? Because if it was dark red, then I need to leave. You know, that's a surefire sign that I need to go pack my bags up. The relationship is over. But if it's pale, if it's pink, then I can stick around. And I think that right there, that <laughs> that form of thinking actually, you know, uh, puts us in a more deeper, uncomfortable situation that we need to be in. It extends the relationship longer than it needs to be in the first place, right? Um, <laughs> especially if you are dealing with the overall nice guy. Like, you know, you're not being harmed. You're not being spoken to in a disrespectful way. You know, overall, they're a decent human being. But that doesn't mean that they are, and particularly, the human being for you in a romantic sense, right? So I definitely can, <laughs> can relate to the message that he was coming across. And I had to evaluate my relationship and say, okay, you know what? What is it within the relationship that's not serving me? Or better yet, what is it? that is hindering me from living my best life and um i felt like because i am a caregiver i am a person who likes to help people in general i was just giving away that too much right just really not putting it in myself first of course until my cup runneth over but really uh helping people from an empty cup <laughs> and then you know also Seeking out the best in someone and trying to help them see that for themselves, I think is another trait that we as women have in a romantic relationship. You know, we can definitely look at somebody else's situation or their characteristic and see so much greatness in them. And we want them to feel that for themselves through us. So we try to be that light in their eyes whenever their light is dim or even whenever it's out, right? We try to help them the best way we can to realize their worth and their value and we want them to understand the amount of love that we give as if the love that we give or the amount of love that we give is going to be enough to help them in a situation and a lot of times it could be further from the truth like 
that old saying or the song, you know, what love got to do with it? What's love got to do with it by Tina Turner? I didn't know what it meant because the song came out whenever I was not even born. The movie was out whenever I was a kid, so I didn't really understand what she was talking about until well into adulthood. And I'm trying to figure out, well, what does that mean? What you mean love don't, love, what's love got to do with it? But don't you need love to form a relationship, to stay in a relationship? Child. Like my mother say, keep growing, baby. <laughs> keep growing. So yeah, I mean, you don't learn until until you um, have to be in that situation. You learn by trial and error. You learn by, you know, discussing, you know, uh, different conversations with wise people. I mean, it's just all a learning cycle. But I'll tell you one thing. If you find yourself in a situation where you feel like, okay, your partner is weighing you down, they are the anchor that is keeping you away from living your purpose, now, I'm not I'm not trying to be in your business. <laughs> but I'm just saying you you need to evaluate some things. You need to ask questions. So this is another way that you can know whenever your relationship may be over. If you start really enjoying the songs that have the terms or the phrases in it like goodbye, I'm not coming back no more. To the left, to the left. I hate you so much right now. My personal favorite, Set Me Free by Lila James. Now listening to songs like that doesn't necessarily mean that you should just pack up your bags and leave. Hell, you, you, you probably don't even have bags. You, you probably don't even need to pack, just leave. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, right? It just means, it could mean that you enjoy great music. You enjoy soulful music that speaks to your heart. You know, there's a lot of great musicians out there that produce powerful, powerful records. But the whole point is that you understanding that if you are feeling that, if that song is igniting the feeling that you already have in you based upon some circumstances that you've been in, based upon uh, situations that arise within the relationship and you feel like okay you know what I'm giving too much of myself it's not worth it they're taking away this from me you know the relationship is pulling me down I'm not able to be my best self you know things like that you feel like that's what's going on then definitely it is it's enough information to go off of to understand that there needs to be an, a, ch a change there needs to be something that needs to be addressed in the relationship because somewhere or another you are feeling some type of dis-ease. You know what, guys? Sometimes we enter into a romantic relationship not really knowing who we are. Um, we still have some work to do. We may be in a transitional phase in our life whenever we are just trying to figure things out. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not deserving of love. It could mean that you are absolutely deserving of love, but it just not is the right timing for you. Um, but at any rate, whether it's the right timing or the wrong timing, you ultimately, we ultimately need to make sure that we are free, free to be who we are, free to live in our purpose, free to be the person that we love and desire within ourselves. right? We're not seeking validation from someone else. And I really like the quote that Bob Proctor uh, used in one of his seminars. Now, he was a motivational speaker, an author, a mentor for myself, and really had helped me with getting through a lot of things in my life. He has passed on now, but, you know, I still hold true to some of his teachings, and I really love what he says about the law of attraction. But one particular uh, quote that he had said one time resonated with me, and I just want to share it with you guys. So, Mr. Bob Proctor stated, if I want to be free, I've got to be me. Not the me I think you think I should be. Not the me I think my wife thinks I should be. Not the me I think my kids think I should be. But if I want to be free, I've got to be me. So I better know who me is. Very profound quote. Very relatable, especially to us independent mothers. Find out who you are if you haven't already. And be that person. I hope that you enjoyed this video today. I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you soon on the next video. Take care. Goodbye.